Johnny Cueto and James Shields both have Central Division roots, but now they're a couple of hired guns that have come out west, and both have reputations of performing at their best on the biggest stage. Tonight, they meet in game two of the series. Giants Padres, Cueto Shields, next. Night baseball here at AT&T Park as we get ready to welcome in the San Diego Padres for game two of this three game series Giants and Padres. Hi again everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper alongside me is Mike Kruko. A nice opening to the series win for the Giants last night as Santiago Casilla picks up his 100th career save and tonight you know you always look for an angle that's fun and every time Johnny Cueto gets the ball it's fun. The only bad part about Johnny Cueto is we have to wait five days to see him pitch and he's been that entertaining. But tonight there's a little something on this game that uh, is a little unique. There are three guys in this Padre lineup that really have good ownage on him. John Jay, Matt Kemp, Alexa Ramirez, their lifetime numbers are phenomenal. So I mean the outcome of this ball game is really going to be how Johnny Cueto can control those guys. On the other side of the coin, James Shields is a pitcher that uh, that you have to get pitches out of and the Giants have been very, very good at that. Grinding down starting pitchers and I think those are going to be things we can watch tonight. Giants obviously would like to win tonight and then tomorrow before they head to New York on Thursday. All right. When we come back we're going to get an update and it's come from Willie Mays Plaza with the fellas an update from the plaza right after this. Jack in the Box. Taste the baconlicious sourdough bacon ranch combo only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. 
Oh, those kids are beautiful. A little taste of Chinese heritage night here at the park as the Giants hung on for a big bounce back win last night. They're going to try and make it two in a row this evening as they get set for game two of this three game series against the Padres. Welcome back to our broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez. And before we get to an awesome matchup of Johnny Cueto and James Shields, we're going to reminisce for a second. What is your favorite play in Giants history? We have a feeling the one we're about to show you is on your list because 27 years ago today Kevin Mitchell nonchalantly made one of the best catches ever barehanded it's our Togo's big play the Togo's way Hank Greenwald has the call and that's sliced uh, to left field and it's another chance for Mitchell and he makes a barehanded catch in my entire life I've never seen that happen <laughs> Well, look at that. <laughs> I, I have a feeling you're not alone. You got to be kidding me. Boogie Bear was a great giant. You never get tired of watching that. Another great giant in that call, our own Dwayne Kuyper was sitting next to Hank Greenwald. You're going to hear from Dwayne Kuyper and Mike Kruko. Cueto, Shields, lineups, first pitch after this commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Oh, those kids are beautiful. A little taste of Chinese heritage night here at the park as the Giants hung on for a big bounce back win last night. They're going to try and make it two in a row this evening as they get set for game two of this three game series against the Padres. Welcome back to our broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez. And before we get to an awesome matchup of Johnny Cueto and James Shields, we're going to reminisce for a second. What is your favorite play in Giants history? We have a feeling the one we're about to show you is on your list because 27 years years ago today Kevin Mitchell nonchalantly made one of the best catches ever barehanded it's our Togo's big play the Togo's way Hank Greenwald has the call and that's sliced to, to left field and it's another chance for Mitchell and he makes a barehanded catch in my entire life I've never 
seen that happen. <laughs> well, look at that. <laughs> I, I have a feeling you're not alone. You got to be kidding me. Boogie Bear was a great giant. You never get tired of watching that. Another great giant in that call. Our own Dwayne Kuyper was sitting next to Hank Greenwald. You're going to hear from Dwayne Kuyper and Mike Kruko. Cueto Shields lineups. First pitch after this commercial break. Don't go anywhere. So check out our game time weather and it's presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The boardwalk is open. Visit beachboardwalk.com for park hours. It is 58 degrees. You see the winds at 12 miles per hour. Humidity at 65 percent. And it is windy and cool. All right. Let's take a look at the Padres lineup. Not that much different from yesterday. It'll be. John Jay to lead things off, followed by Myers, Kemp, and then Melvin Upton Jr. Hitting fifth will be Derek Norris. Following Norris will be Alexi Ramirez, then Jamile Weeks, followed by Adam Rosales, and then pitching and batting ninth will be James Shields, or otherwise known as Big Game James. Now that man right there is going to be on the hill tonight for the Giant. And Johnny Cueto has left a very strong impression on the fans here in Northern California. And he gets set to lead out the troops. You, you never really know if he's pitching that day or if it's just another day. If you watch the demeanor of Johnny Cueto before a game, and he's as relaxed a big league athlete as we've ever been around. Very Levon Hernandez like. That is the fact. Let's take a look at the numbers. In four starts, he's three and one with a 3 4 1 ERA, 22 strikeouts against four walks. Cueto, 5'11, 220 pounder. He's 30 years of, of age. He's in his ninth year at the big league level. How does he get you out? Well, 
he'll go anywhere from 88 to 96 miles per hour with the velocity of the fastball depending on the grip and the mood that he's in and how he wants to use it a number of different wind ups uh, a very pronounced big turn he'll show you the letter or the numbers on his back he'll quick pitch you he's got a slider cutter he'll sink the ball he's got a curveball a change up he'll basically throw anything at you absolutely fearless as to what to throw and when to throw it Lifetime against these Padres four and three with a three nine one ERA. Let's take a look at the defense behind Cueto tonight starting in the outfield from left to right for the Giants. It'll be Pagan Span and Pence. Crawford and Duffy will be on the left side of the infield panic and Bell on the right side and Buster Posey will be in the squad putting down the signs. So John Jay about ready to step in as we get ready to Start game two of this three game series. Giants winning last night by a final of 5 4. So here's Jay. Jay last night went one for four, sitting at 263. As Cueto taking his time now gets the sign from Buster Posey and this game gets started with a pitch down low. So we get started at 716. Cueto working quickly as he always does and this is roped down the right field line and John Jay who's got big ownage on Cueto is going to stand at second base with a double. Well, it's time for our Nissan keys of the game, and uh, John Jay is one of the keys. Cueto has to control the owners, and there are three guys in this Padre lineup that really see him well, and John Jay is one of them. Matt Kemp, the other, and Alexi Ramirez is another one. So that is one key. Number two, you got to go out and out glove the Padres. Good defense, especially behind a strike thrower like Cueto, that will be essential. Those are our Nissan keys to the game. So here's Myers. Myers last night a hit in five at bats. Cueto looks to second and Myers bounces this one to Joe Panic and Panic will throw out Myers so Myers gets the job done with the ground ball to the right side. And here's Kemp. So Kemp, who went three for five last night, comes in hitting at 289. He's got good numbers, as Mike mentioned during the keys against Cueto. Seven for 16 with a couple of home runs. Belt is going to play as far off the line as I've ever seen him play. I mean, that is that is huge. <laughs> That's. Almost like there's no first baseman on the field. And a strike and it's 0 and 1 and Kempton thinks so. That's called by the way by DJ Rayburn, Fagan, Carapaza and Welke. And I think Rayburn is basically a low ball umpire. When we first saw him he was extremely tight and then as we've seen him more he's starting to loosen that strike zone up. Remember, Cueto had the one outing in the first inning where he gave up five runs. Well, that's been the most problematic inning, and the one big inning came in just one game. High and foul, and this is going to drift into the seats. Turns out to be a good workout for Pence and for Belt. And it's one and two. Team wise, the Padres are seven and thirteen. And the Giants are ten and eleven. So they're trying to bounce back on this homestand. Started out horrible. High fastball, two and two. Yeah. Hey, it's Nacho's time. You better get into that or you're not going to get any. Well, that is definitely his daughter. 
You think? Yep. Two balls, two strikes. Kemp steps out. Cueto and Posey trying to come up with a pitch. Oh. Wow. 37 years together. All she wants for her birthday is to meet Kruka Kai, hug Buster Posey, and get a baseball. Can you help? <laughs> I'll take Amy G. And Kemp. It's a swing. <laughs> We'll let this game get in the way of us having a good time. Yeah, we will get them a ball, and then we'll do that. And we actually will give Amy G the ball, and then he can get his hug and a ball. There you go. So here's a, uh, Melvin Upton Jr., who started off having a pretty good year, and he takes high one and zero. Upton win one for four in the game last night. The Padres had 11 hits last night. The Giants had 12. In tight, two balls and no strikes. Quinto cut the ball. Movement running away from a righty. He'll run two seam fastballs that have moved that has movement running into a righty. Assortment of breaking balls, change ups from the assortment of wind ups can even change things up out of the stretch. And the strike, two and one. If we do our math right, he will start what? Monday in Cincinnati. Going back to Cincinnati, the town that he broke into the big leagues wearing the red uni. He has a lot of fun. This in his heart for that city. Reds fans. Crawford in the hole. Crawford to Bell. Side retired. Nice comeback for Cueto. Span, Panic, Duffy, and Posey coming up. That James Shields is going to face. It'll be Span, Panic, and Duffy. Buster Posey in the cleanup spot. Then it's Belt, Pence, and Crawford. Cueto will hit eighth. And Pagan, who went three for four last night and is now hitting at a nice 356 clip, he will hit ninth. On the hill tonight for the San Diego Padres will be the veteran right hander, James Shields. Shields, a 10 year veteran, 6'3, 212 pounder. 34 years of age. He's a California native out of New Hall, lives in San Diego now. When you take your at bats against him, you're going to see a 90 ish fastball that he will two and four seam. He has outstanding command with a three quarter release. He's got a curveball slider and a changeup. He'll throw anything anytime. And really, he's very consistent to the low part of the strike zone. I mean, he gets it going. He will not elevate very often, only when he needs to. Against the Giants, he's two and one with a 288 ERA. He has never won in this ballpark, never has fared well. At AT and T, and facing Denard Span, who went one for five last night, and Span looks at a pitch wide, one ball and no strikes. Panic, 
And then Duffy here in the bottom of the first. Guy hit 257 with an on base percentage of 349. Struck well into center field. On the move is John Jay, and Jay is going to put it away. Let's take a look at the defense for the Padres playing behind Shields tonight, starting in their outfield from left to right. It'll be Upton, Jay, and Kemp. Good arms on the corners with Upton and Kemp. Ramirez and Rosales on the left side of the infield. Weeks and Myers on the right side. Derek Norris, he'll be in the squad putting down the sign. Here's Joe Panic. Joe three for five in the game last night. And here he takes low. He's got good numbers against Shields. He's six for 15 with two doubles. And the pitch is wide. It's two and zero. Oh. Two balls and no strikes. Tap foul right off the end of the bat. Two and one. Giants are six and six overall at home. And they're three and five on this homestand. Padres have lost three straight. They're Four and eight at home and three and five on the road. And this is driven to right, and Kemp is right there and he puts it away. So a couple of balls hit pretty hard, and here's Duffy. Duffy's got that average up to 250. It was under 200 for a while, which did not sit very well with him. He went one hit in four at bats last night. Many people thought he had a hit in the eighth inning, but uh, people in New York and the replay system said no. Matt Kemp did not trap it, he caught it. Which we did not agree with. Hit into center field. Yeah, we were in a disagreement mood yesterday. Eight pitch inning for Shields after one here at AT&T Park. Nothing, nothing. The SN Bay Area is brought to you by AAA. Get a free Giants all-season blanket. Restrictions apply. Go to AAA.com slash Giants or to a AAA branch for details.
Well, Marvel Superheroes Day is Saturday, May 7th. Your event package is going to include a ticket to the game and then a Captain America Orange and Black collectible bobblehead. Remember, you need that special event ticket. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events. Here's Derek Norris. Norris is trying to get off the interstate on this chilly night. It is a bit brisk. We got Sharks fans here. We got Warrior fans. We have good fans here. One ball and one strike. Good break a ball right there. I did not miss by much. So right away, Cueto is showing the Padres and everybody in this ballpark that he's got a good command of his stuff. Even when he misses, he's close. Duffy to Bell. All right. Amy G is here, so let's go down to Amy. All right, gentlemen, I spent some time today with Madison Bumgarner and asked him about Santiago Casilla recording his 100th save last night. He said beyond being a great baseball player, he's one of the best people in the game. He said he is always there for him. They always have a chance to chat. And then he went on to say it's really good that he's a really good pitcher because he can't hit and he can't run. And he was kidding. Madison Bumgarner on Casilla, guys. He was kidding, kind of. That was a pitch for a strike. And it's 0 and 1. <laughs> 233 for Ramirez and Onich. 7 for 11 with a double and a home run. 7 for 11 off a guy. Yeah, yeah. That is, that, you're seeing him well. Two balls and a strike. A little bit of a quick pitch. And the other thing, too, about guys that have Onage is you don't see him chase very often. And it's because they see their pitches. They swing at balls that are in the strike zone. And that's the key to being a good hitter. Get a good pitch to hit. It's a fair ball. Duffy's going to have to hurry. The double clutch. Got him anyway. Nice play. Well, he had to dig deep in the in the arm department. And it helps that when you signed your contract professionally for the first time you're a shortstop and they always have the best arms and here he has to make a shortstop throw it's our expo brought to you by your local Toyota dealer despite the double pump he's still on his right foot can put a little something on it and that's a nice play I mean, he actually I have to take a little stutter step to get around the bag watch the footwork a little short step there and all of a sudden boom there's nothing worse for an infield than a trip over the bag on a ground ball Looks bad. Well, you can step on your glove. Jamile Weeks. 0 oh 2. One more look. A little problem with the grip on the ball. The footwork's a little stuttered. Still, through it all, he gets it done. He's an old first baseman. He's ready. And that'll end the inning. Two ground balls and a strikeout. And Posey's going to hit first.
Baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers. Insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit hefins.com. Well, Tuesday, May 10th is Japanese Heritage Night presented by Magnaflex, and your special event package will include a ticket to see the Giants take on the Blue Jays and access to the Japanese Heritage Night pregame party and a limited edition Japanese Giants t-shirt. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events. Posey takes a strike. Buster's thinking, I like that pitch when I'm catching it, when I'm hitting. I don't like it when he calls it a strike. Two, or make it one ball and one strike with Belt on deck and then Pence. Seeing two pitchers tonight, Cueto and Shields, really have a, a nice feel of baseball. It's rare that they have problems with control. Hit on the ground and Rosales digs it out and his throw is in time and Posey's retired. Nice play. Giants have gotten pretty good wood on Shields, but they do not have a hit. And they have a few things to work out. Right now, all smiles. Here's Belt. Built at 275, four for six lifetime against Shields with two doubles. That's Onage. That's Onage. Overshift is on. Weeks is playing in right field. Somebody had written a story about suggesting maybe the Rockies ought to go with four outfielders. There's four outfielders on this play right well, you're here. You're right. I mean, think about it. And here they are. If Belt hits a line drive to Jamal Weeks, he's going to say some words that we've never heard before. <laughs> well, you know, he does. I think he's better at it now. I mean, there was a time he used to really get frustrated when he would lose a hit, hit a ball right of the screws, and the shift would take it away. But, you know, he's just not the kind of guy that complains a whole lot. Very steady temperament. Two balls and a strike. Belt cannot hold up. It's two and two. Here's Hunter Pence with the new elbow guard. Got him. Well, he thinks they're high. But uh, it's not something that's uncommon with DJ Rayburn. I mean, he will call some belt highs. This is two two seam fastball. And in Rayburn's mind, that's right in the top of the strike zone. And by definition of the rule book, he's probably right, but you just don't see many pitches called that high above the belt. Well, plus, when the catcher moves his glove like that, you always thinking that, well, he moved it for a reason. There's a pitch outside for a ball, one and all. Pence takes outside. It's two balls and no strikes. Outside, three balls and no strikes. He's trying to scratch that strike zone. He's not really attacking it. On deck is Crawford. And the walk. 
So Shields with two outs is going to get the stretch for the first time. He puts himself in it. And this, we go back to game one of 2014 when Gabe Shields threw a challenge fastball and Hunter Pitts took it over a wall. Well, it, not many people have been able to do from the right side all year long. And that set the tone. Wow, that was a loud swing of the bat. It was. Shields is, uh, Shields is directing John Jay to come in. And John Jay's going, really? This is not my first day in the big leagues. <laughs> I don't think he moved. And the first pitch is a strike, and it's 0 and 1. John Jay, for many years, patrolled center field out in St. Louis. Good center fielder. Yes, indeed. Crawford pulls this one foul. So a little work for the ball dude out there, Glenn Casillas. The old left hander. Just looking for the first blonde he could find. Meanwhile, over on the third base side, Mark Madden. That's the first glove ever made right there. Owen to Crawford. Well, I think he hit Crawford right on the guard. And that elbow piece is, it protects the base of the tricep. And I think that's right where he got him. See the pad? So, hey. Somewhere Barry Bonds is smiling. If you don't have that pad on right now, you're not a happy person. Somewhere Greg Biggio is smiling. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been a whole lot worse without the pad. Oh, my goodness. Hey, you put those pads on, right? And you put them on for months, and you don't exactly. even come close to getting hit. And then one day you leave it off, it's going to happen. Here's Cueto, who is not only an entertaining pitcher, but he's an entertaining hitter. And he will bunt at any time. And he shoots it into center field, and it's right at John Jay, and that's going to end the inning. So Cueto lines out. Thank you. 
Major League managers with 750 plus wins with multiple franchises all time. Well, Sparky Anderson, he had over 1,300 with the Tigers, over 600 with the Reds, and Tony La Russa, and Bruce Bochy, 951 with the Padres. And when it's all said and done, he's going to have over 1,500 wins with the Giants. That's my call. <laughs> I like that call. We mentioned that at dinner at Pebble Beach with his wife Kim. But uh, what, 15 more years? And most nodded, yeah. And she was like, nodded the other way. No. No. Rosales pops this one back, and Buster Posey will run out of room. Oh. There we go. Somebody got them a ball. And now the, they gave Amy a hug, so so far so good. So happy anniversary. Yeah. Rosales hitting 222. Oh and two. It's tight little break and ball, perfect location. Rosales is aggressive and he likes to swing it, especially if ball's down. Tried to back door to the two seamer and he just missed. I mean his misses tonight tonight have really been close to the strike zone. Got him. Change up with two seed grip. Third strikeout. That'll be a first eight hitters he's faced. Let you see the numbers on his back. He'll hold it for a couple seconds. Two seam movement, a little sink down below the strike zone. And Rosales cannot get to it. I mean, in the batter's box, you have to be thinking, what's he going to do next? That's a fact. Shields is 0 for 6. Well, and there's the little quick pitch. Strike. Just the athleticism to be able to maintain a release point from the different windups. So that's what blows my mind. It's not easy. And he makes it look easy. And that's rolled foul. No strikes in that one. Well, welcome. I think daughter took dad to her <laughs> dad to the game. I think so. I think she paid him back for all the times that he took her. Yep. Yeah, you're right. High, two and two. And I bet he taught her how to keep score. I bet he did. Got him. Change up. Four strikeouts. So everything he can do with the ball right now is working. And it's working from a couple different motions. Two seam grip way out front. Shields expected a whole lot more velocity. Never got it. Well, here's John Jay, who has been a real pain in the side of. Johnny Cueto over the years. It might be time just to start telling John Jay what's coming. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. Just change the deal. It wouldn't hurt. Out of play. Nice catch by a fan who didn't bring his glove. Wow. I'm impressed. And look at he gave it up right away. Yeah. I did a good thing. I'm the man and I know it. <laughs> well, I can't argue it's with all instant gratification. 
Well, if he wants to get a kiss on the doorstep, he better give that baseball up, and he did. Oh, oh yeah, no, that's a lot. Are you kidding? All right, one more play. I mean, that's a good play. Oh, for me? Yeah. Yeah. Pulled on the ground, foul. All right, lefty, had a baby. I think the ring is next. Yeah. Got him. And that'll end the inning. Strikes oh. out the side. He's got five now in the game. It's nothing, nothing. On CSN Bay Area is brought to you by T-Mobile. Get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. All right, time now for our Geico quote. This comes from Bruce Bochy talking about Angel Pagan in the ninth slot where he's been hitting all year. He says, it's working right now where he's at. I think he likes it in there. I'm very much aware how much he's doing offensively. And that's our Geico quote. Can tell if that was you or him. <laughs> I love it when John Miller does Bochi. He's got him down. Pagan takes a strike. Pagan, four for 13 with a double in his career against James Shields. He had two two out base hits to knock in runs last night, and when you end up winning six or five four. Turns out that that's the difference. He loves April. Sharply on the ground and Ramirez on a nice backhand and his throw is going to be just in time. Nice play. That is the big leagues. Everything about that hole at bat was the big leagues. The pitch was on the outside corner. Pagan goes with it. A two hop seam. Ramirez slides into it to a backhand, gets up and guns him down. And Pagan, who has great speed, busting his tail all the way down the line. I mean, everything about this play is what this level is all about. That's beautiful defense. Beautiful hit. Everything about it. Span hit a fly ball to deep center field in the first. There he takes just off the plate. Sunset in the city. Wish you were here. And a call strike.
Joe Panic is on deck. Tap foul, one and two. Backed it up, two change ups in a row. Oh, you gotta get the hat. But just it's all about how you feel today. I the deadhead have is had it going. Yeah. There you go. Creative. Out of play down the left field line. Look out. Creative and practical on a cool night here. Absolutely. That's the one. You remember when you were a kid and went to Dodger Stadium and they had these concessions and you wanted everything. Yep. And the yep. prices back then was like two dollars for that. I don't think my old man's going to spring for that. No, not for two bucks. There's no way. Span out in front pops this one out to left field where Upton's going to wait for this one. Two outs. And that'll bring up panic. Joe lined out to right field in the first inning. And the first pitch is down low. The 1 0 to panic is low again. Two balls and no strikes. There's that concession stand that we went to as kids. Panic bounces this one to Myers, and that's going to do it. So Shields with another inning where he gives up nothing. Myers, Kemp, and Upton coming up. Ford Ray Choice, we're going to let you look at the uniqueness of Johnny Cueto. Big upper body turn, change up, and Rosales, see you later. Now a quick pitch, change up, Shields, see you later. And then from a quick pitch, a guy that sees him well, John Jay, goes down looking. Three pitch, three outs, three strikeouts. 
And that's our forward right choice. So here's Myers who's going to lead things off and he ropes one into left field for a base hit. So a leadoff single. And that's the second hit for the Padres. That's a 11 game hitting streak now for Myers. Kemp. Kemp takes the pitch just inside. Kemp struck out in the first inning. Soft toss. Myers has got two steals. Quito has a very good move. The first base out of the windup or out of the stretch rather. New baseball. And a good pitch on the outside corner to even up the count at one ball and one strike. 1.05 on load time. That's fast. There's a lot of things to help us catch her out. Just the reputation of having a good pickoff move can keep a guy a little shorter in his lead. Comes back and works the inside corner. Upton and then Norris here in the fourth inning in a nothing nothing ball game. On the ground and it's foul, so it's two and two. Or you could go to Original Joe's, get yourself a burger. I think this ballpark is outstanding. Very good. John James Cross, Derby Grill. Two and two. Quito takes a peek at Myers. And Kemp has to reach out to stay alive. Or you can have a corn dog come to you. You are not a corn dog guy. No, I hate corn dogs. <laughs> good mustard. No. Good corn dog. No, 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 no. Got him again. Change up again. <laughs> Just come at you with the same arm action as a fastball. And there was at one point in that swing until it was too late that Kemp thought he was going to get anything else but a fastball. Way out front reaching. That's a thing of beauty. Natural. I bet it is. Here's Upton who bounced out to Brendan Crawford to end the first inning. Nice swing and a foul back. He's got a quick bat. Yeah, he's got a very quick hands. Little flare to right, and this is going to fall. So 
So moving over to third is Myers. They make a good pitch at a guy, just fights it off. Do everything right as a pitcher. Hits the ball about four inches above the thumbs. Thing of beauty. So Pence does the smart thing, runs it back in. So Cueto now will go after Norris, a pitch for the strikeout or double play ball. Throw down to second. Got him. Wow. They're looking at Upton because from the Padres bench, they're thinking that was pretty close. It could go either way. Well, Upton doesn't think so. Right on the money. He's out. And it's not close. Tell you, you the unload time from Cueto fast, the unload time from Posey fast. Posey's unload time 1.82. And even a good jump at a fast runner like Upton. I mean, watch the, the Posey release. I mean, that's just wow. absolute perfection. That's unbelievable. It really is. I mean, you can't steal a base on. When you have a pitcher holding that, and you have a catcher with that type of release. And Upton, Upton did everything right. I think, I'm thinking he's thinking. He's got that base stolen. Yep. Well, that makes this inning a little different now. A base hit or a mistake by the Giants. And the throw by Posey it wasn't really about accuracy. It was about how he got rid of it so quickly. Foul to the backstop. Really nice play all the way around. I mean, if you have a catcher who's two seconds, I mean, it's acceptable to big league level. When you're at 1.82, I mean, that that separates you from the herd. One and two. Cueto steps off. Two guys grinding right now. Norris, Cueto. Pagan and left. Side retired. Cueto gets out of the mess. Duffy, Posey, and Belt are coming up.
Mag is set to air tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. right before Giants pregame live, and it's a good one. We get to talk to the best broadcasters in the biz. Crook and Kite talk to us about their working relationship and their friendship, and Jake Peavy making a difference on the field and off the field. He's a good guy, that Peavy. G-Mag tomorrow, 11.30. It's going to be a good one, guys. Don't miss it. I'll miss it. Over there, we were there. Yeah, we were there. It was good. It was. So here's Duffy. Giants do not have a hit. They've had two base runners and they've hit a couple of line drives. And Duffy is going to hit one high and foul and out of play. It's 0 and 1. And Shields, has something in his eye or is he hurt? Walked out the mat immediately went to his eye. I don't know if he wears contacts. A bug. A bug flew in his eye. Yeah. Could have been. They trained him to do that. Yeah, around here? Absolutely. Duffy hits one to left, but Upton got a good jump on it, and he makes the catch. So here's Buster Posey. Buster tonight is 0 for 1. He bounced out to third. With Belt to follow. And it's low one ball and no strikes Dodgers are leading Miami 2 nothing that game in the fourth Pirates are leading the Rockies 8 4 that game in the seventh and the Cardinals are leading Arizona 5 nothing in the sixth as Posey hits a high fly ball center field not in this park two outs and here's belt. Not to say that other parks that would have gone out in, but there are some parks where the air is a little lighter, and you're going to get a lot more carry. Been a windy day all day, a cold day here in San Francisco. And it's not a night where you expect to get carry. Definitely a night that favors the pitcher and the score reflects it. So here's Belt who get caught looking in the second. Giants will play tomorrow and then get on a plane after the game and head to New York. Day off on Thursday. And the mighty Mets and the Giants on Friday night. Shake Shack. And then you and I hit the streets. Friday night. Catch a nap before the late afternoon game on Saturday. There's a pitch outside 2 0. I have no problem with that plan. Make it 3 0. Thinking about New York, missed the pitch. <laughs> the big half. Might have happened years ago, but not so much now. 3 and 1. Not a town you can conquer off the field. No. And the walk to Belt, and here's Pence. Away, away, away. The whole of that away. Of course, we used to say the same thing about Chicago in the National League when there were no lights. Just great towns. Oh my goodness. Just great towns. We got a pretty good one here in San Francisco. Pence drew a walk in the second. Low and away 
1 0. Last night, Hunter Pence down the left field line. It's amazing how he could stay so flat, even at a ball below his knees. And he backspin that thing out to left field. He's really starting to have a nice swing. His foundation has calmed down. Seen the ball better. And that pitch right there is another indicator. Early in April, he was hacking. Not picking up the ball. Now, different guy. Belt being held on by Myers at first. Shields about to throw pitch number 47 on the night for him. And a strike. Backed it up, another changeup. You can do that when you have a good changeup, and Shields does have a good changeup. And he can throw four times in a row. Corner, a little breaking ball. You know the fourth inning, you should be about 60 pitches or less, so he's ahead of where he should be. Pitch count not an issue for Shields. Yet. So now the count is full and Belt will be on the move. A lot of soft stuff in this at bat. Crawford would love to get a chance this inning. Runner goes foul off the backstop. We'll do it again. Well, a lot of off-speed stuff. Then in a three-two count, he tried to sneak attack with a little fastball, and two-seam movement. So we'll do it again with Bell taking off the pitch. So they're going to pop up. It's Myers coming down from first, and that'll end the inning. Giants strand Belt. We will head to the fifth. Nothing, nothing.
on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by PG&E, together building a better California. Uh, next time you want to grab some giant seats, get the Stub Up app. Not only will you find seats you love, whenever you want, you can find the best seat for your buck when you sort out by best value. Get Stub Up app today. Here's Alexi Ramirez who bounced out to Matt Duffy. And he lifts this one out to Pagan. Pagan on the move, and Pagan can't get it. As it bounces off the wall and at the bottom of the uh, the wall, and it's a double for Ramirez. Ball oh. took off. Onage is Onage. Onage is Onage. We talked about the lifetime seven for 11 that Ramirez had against Johnny Cueto, and gets a hanging slider right up in his eyes. And he does not miss the location mistake. I think you have to feel lucky that he didn't get knocked out of here. Right about there, Pagan realized that, and he caught a break. It hit the bottom of, or hit the shoe of Pagan. Otherwise, it could have bounced further away. So here's Weeks, who struck out in the second, and he hits this one to Span, and Span's going to grab. Ramirez is going to tag. Crawford's throw is late, so it's a productive out for Weeks. And here's Rosales with Ramirez now at third. Strikeout situation. Be interesting to see how Bruce Bochy plays the infield against Rosales. And they're coming in. You're a pitcher, and you see your manager bring that infield in like that. In your mind, you're thinking strikeout. Get that out yourself. And Rosales gets knocked down. It's one ball and no strikes. Well, two seamers just heat seeks right into him. I'll get your attention and we'll definitely crank up the bat speed on a pitcher or a hitter rather. We're right back in there again. Two and zero with Shields on deck. Quite a really doesn't have to come in at all. Two and one. If you do walk Rosales, then you don't look. Shields. They bunt, and now you got a guy that's got ownage on you coming up. Yeah, I mean, that's he, the problem. He wants to get Rosales and end it with Shields. He doesn't want, <laughs> want this inning to get to John Jay, a guy who's had great lifetime success against him. So now, a 3 1 count, this becomes a big pitch. Here's the 3 1, and it's outside for a ball. Not even close. First walk issued. Here's Shields. He's Shields not a, struck out in the third. And he's not a bad hit pitcher. No, he's not. So there's no given that he's going to punt. So Shields at the plate, Ramirez at third, Rosales at first. And a bunt, and it's a good one. And Cueto is not going to get anybody. Probably best left for Duffy.
Now he was seeing Ramirez come off the base, and I think he's thinking that if he could get to it, he might be able to get Ramirez. But you're right. I mean, the only guy who really had a chance to get Shields would have been Duffy. Just an awkward off-balance throw. But that's all right there in front of Cueto. Like he had a little problem with his back foot, too. So now the bases are loaded for the guy that's got ownage on him and it's gone different ways in two different at bats. Jay double in the first and then Cueto struck him out in the third. Strike and it's 0 and 1. That's all paint right there. And maybe he tries to do that again. No balls in one strike. No swing on the appeal. Runners in scoring position. John Jay's in the top three. Yeah, hitting 588. <laughs> On the ground to Crawford. That's one. And no! Close. Did he come off the bat? He have a chance. All right, let's take a look at it. He got him. If his foot stayed in contact with the bag, I think they got him. He's out. I believe you're right. But we haven't exactly been stellar in our. Uh, and you know what? I'm not going to say anything. Our opinion in regards to these replays over the weekend, he did not fare well. They're going to look at it. This replay review is presented by Xfinity. So, here we are again. And that ball is hit so sharply. I mean, you'd think with Jay's speed that it would have been a ball that he'd been able to outrun, but I don't I think he did. You. Uh, you know, look, this goes back to where don't lie to me. do you count? Is it in the pocket? Yeah, he's out. I'm putting double play. In ink? In ink. <laughs> he's putting it in ink, folks. Yeah, this was going to be called a double play. And just replayed it here in the ballpark, and everybody here is thinking it's this major unbiased opinion in our park. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to speed up the process tonight. Last night it was just excruciatingly slow. Got him. So Cueto gets the double play and he dodges another inning. A nice turn by Crawford. A nice turn by Panic and Belt. It
Warriors game five at Oracle Arena in Oakland tomorrow at 730. It's an hour long pregame live at 630 and then you can see all of the action right here on CSN Bay Area at 730. We'll be watching. We'll be watching. We will be watching. Here's Shields to Crawford. And Crawford takes a strike. Giants do not have a hit. They've had three base runners. They need a hit. Crawford was hit on the elbow guard in the second inning. One ball and one strike. Crawford up the middle. Ramirez trying to slide and catch and grab and throw, and he missed it. And it's a base hit. And hey, we had a letter from uh, a couple of fans from Great Britain and uh, a couple of Brits who have fallen in love with Giants baseball, and uh, they sent us a cricket ball, which uh, is pretty much the same size as a baseball. You can see the comparison. One, the cricket weighs five and a half ounces. This weighs five and a quarter ounces. But they had a question in watching all baseball. Why do you call a changeup a changeup and not a change down? Because it does sink and whatnot. So they're watching the game, listen to all of our vernacular, and uh, they were wondering about the changeup. And to answer your question, it's Johnny Cueto's getting ready to put a bunt down here. And it's a beauty. And they just get him. And he's putting some heat on, too, running down that yeah, line. He likes to run. But a change up uh, it, it was originally called a slow ball and then it kind of morphed into a change of pace and then sort of morphed into a change up. But uh, that's what it is. I mean it's, it's kind of a change of speeds off of the fastball. So it became a change of pace change of kind of make, became a change up. So I hope that answers your question and thanks a lot for the uh, cricket ball which is very cool. Uh, really what I think more confused than ever. So Jeff and Tracy I hope you are <laughs> no longer confused <laughs> and welcome to our great game. Here's Pagan and Norris just got crossed up. It's one ball and no strikes. And you can see the difference in the size uh, the Slazenger cricket ball just like the Slazenger British golf ball a little bit smaller than what we have here in the States and it weighs a little more. So the question is, could Barry Bonds have hit the cricket ball into McCovey Cove? Could have hit it to San Mateo. <laughs> this thing is hard. One and zero to Pagan, and Pagan hits a pop up into shallow right field. A long run for Kemp, and it's going to be Weeks who makes the catch. Nice play. That was not easy. The only one who had a chance at it. Well, the Padres, like most teams, play off the line here at AT&T, play over towards the gap in right center and expose the line. It was going to be Jamiah Weeks and nobody else. And he makes a very difficult play look easy. So now Span will hit with Crawford at second. Crawford with a huge lead. And Span takes one in tight. One ball and no strikes. 58 pitches for James Shields. With two outs here in the fifth. Same spot and a call strike. One ball and one strike. A little flat cutter at the belt. Span thought that was not only high, but he thought it was inside. So a pitcher strike here for Shields. 
I mean, that's the goal to try and run that little flat cutter at the belt. It's a good pitch from a right handed pitcher to a left handed hitter. Blocked by Norris. Two balls and a strike. Joe Panic is on deck. Shields looking into Norris and now the 2 1 pitch will not be a pitch at all as he chases Crawford back. Three balls and one strike. Heads up, pickoff play, and Crawford gets back easily. See Amy G trying to stick her head in the broadcast booth? Yep. Yeah. Trying to sneak a peek. Had to set her straight. Three and one to span. Span hits one high and deep to right. Kept looking up. Off the bricks. Crawford scores. Span into second. One nothing Giants. I don't know. You think Kemp gave up too soon on that? I think he thought it was going out. I do too. I think the wind really knocks this thing down. I think Span going down first base line thought it was going out. They set up in the outside corner. This is middle in, and that has got an absolute invitation wrapped around it. And Span does not miss it. And you see, you're right. I mean, that hit about four feet up the wall. Yeah, I think there's a lot of wind coming. Whisking through those archways as panic takes low. Gregor Blanco said during batting practice today that the ball he hit yesterday is the that's all he's got. It's the best I could hit one. And it was caught. Shields looking for a little help, wanted that fastball away. Stand on one side of the plate to Joe Panic, and he's too good of a hitter to do that. You've got to move it around. You can't go all one side of the plate. You've got to go inside, outside, mix speeds. You give him a steady diet at one location, and he will square you up. Eleven RBIs puts him in the top four second baseman in the National League. Some productive second baseman going Absolutely. right now. Nope. He may be wanting to pitch to Duffy. Well, he's he's acting like it with an open first base. So Duffy will hit. And he will hit with runners at first and second. He's got the spirit. He's also got some cotton candy too. Saving it. Got nine innings. You gotta space it out. I wasn't really good at spacing stuff out. <laughs> You're right. I mean she may be good at it. I wasn't. My kids weren't good at it either. Still aren't. 
Duffy takes low. He lined out to left field in the fourth. How do I know that? My kids are the same way. Duffy wraps one. This is a sliding catch by Upton. And that is going to end the inning, and Upton may have jammed his leg. Well, that's the problem when you got a center fielder playing in left field, and this is a really nice play. Well, he slides and just plugs his knee into the sod. Giants do have the lead, it's 1 nothing. You know, we've been calling Madison Bumgarner the horse. I think we were wrong. He's now going to be known as the hound. At least that's what Hunter Pence referred to him as. He came into the clubhouse yesterday with a mask of the hound from the Game of Thrones. If you haven't seen the show, go back and watch it. Madison said, what's that? Hunter said, it's for you because you remind me of the hound. I told Madison today, the hound, guys, very scary character. He said, good. I like it. He's going to keep it in his locker. He likes it a lot, guys. Uh, the way I look at it, there's a few guys on this Giants team that could walk onto that set and be in that uh, that series, the Game of Thrones. Oh, totally. One of them's on the mound right now. This has popped up. It'll be Belt. Jeff Samarja, you don't think he can pull it off? Put him in a suit of armor? Yeah, Belt could be in it. Hunter Pence. There's a bunch of them. Let's suppose it could stand guard somewhere. <laughs> just, just keep the gear on for Buster. He could be in it. Plus, it turns out Buster's pretty good in his commercials. Yeah, he is. Swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. Changeup has really perplexed Kemp tonight. It has been the payoff pitch for a couple of strikeouts. Duffy charges, juggles it, recovers, got him. Well, MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you have come to expect and more. It includes a free subscription to at bat premium the number one app for live baseball so go to mlb.tv for details and do it now here's upton he's one for two first pitch high one ball and no strikes
that foul. One and one to Melvin Upton Jr. Giants with a one nothing lead. Good pitch called a ball. Well, at least it looked like a good pitch from here. Well, if it gets it out, it's a great pitch. If it gets called a strike, it's a good pitch. If it doesn't, it's just a pitch. That's a good pitch. Let's take a look at the at bat for Duffy, who's just been getting robbed lately. Duffy Upton was trying to slide into this, and he really jammed his knee into the sod, and it did not give away. Still a beautiful play. Ooh. Look out. Tell you he's going to feel that tomorrow. So he stuck right into the ground. Outside it's three and two. And he came in on Upton and Upton fouls it back. So Plato with 71 pitches. Plato a little fidgety, but then settles in. Says, all right, yep, no, yep, yep, yep. And it's skied out to Pence. And that is a shutdown inning. For the Giants, Posey Belt and Pence, it's 1 0 San Francisco. Area is brought to you by Toyota, the full line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places by Kelly Moore Paints, celebrating 70 years as your neighborhood paint store. By Xfinity, X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. A reminder that game three of this series will be tomorrow at 12 30. Pre game live starts at noon. You'll see right here at CS CSN Bay Area. They'll Home of our Finnick Giants fans is right here in CSM. It's going to be Jeff Samarja taking on right hander Andrew Kashner. So join us if you would. One and zero to Buster Posey. 
And Buster skies this one. On the infield. And Weeks puts it away. Yeah, uh, Giancarlo Stanton just hit a three run home run off of Clayton Kershaw. It stayed hit for a while. We saw it. It was no cheapy. Just right a straightaway center field. So belt is up. He's 0 for 1, a strikeout and a walk. Overshift is on for Belt. And that runs inside to Brandon Belt for a ball. A one hopper, 2 and 0. Oh. Two old pitch. Bell hits a high fly ball to left. Upton back on the track and he makes the catch. So Bell goes the other way. But comes up empty. Well, he needs to save that swing of the bat till he gets to Cincinnati. I mean, there's about a half a dozen ballparks in the National League, maybe more. That ball's out. I, mean, so I gotta believe it felt pretty good. Yeah, here's Pence. Pence has walked and he's popped out. And a high breaking ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. Not close to an O. Both pitchers really have been economical with their pitches tonight. Look out, three and And you would expect a green light here. One nothing ball game, 3 0 count. Pence has been swinging the bat well. Had a home run in the last night's ball game. Ripped into left field. And that'll roll past Upton, and Pence will have a double. With Crawford coming up and first base open, what do you think they'll do? Well, I'm already writing it in. Crawford hitting ahead of Johnny Cueto, the pitcher, who's hitting eight tonight. At this rate, Crawford's going to have about 20 RBIs at the end of the season. He may have 60 intentional walks. Yeah, he, he could close in on half the amount Bonds had one year. <laughs> I'm trying to find some positive out no, of no, this. No, no, it was a good positive. Did Crawford anticipate a pitch? Yeah, Bonds walked 120 times in 04. Intentionally. Walked. How is that even possible? That's like what? Uh, a month's worth. Yeah. I had a chance to see Barry Bonds over the weekend when the Miami Marlins were in town. They did great. Remember the rubber chickens? Oh, yeah. We know where they went now. Mario's restaurant on Columbus. <laughs> 
Rado takes a strike in its own <laughs> one. <laughs> you put know, a parmesan on it's fine. Yeah, give me the uh, the rubber chicken with parmesan cheese. Rado taps it foul. It's 0 and 2. A rubber chicken cacciatore. It's wonderful. Oh my goodness. Rubber chicken parmesan. Have you been to this restaurant, the original U.S.? No, I, I, I'm the only guy in this organization that hasn't been. It's really good. I just didn't think that they, that's where they would end up, though. That's <laughs> <laughs> Pence at second, Crawford at first. And a swing and a miss. Giant strand a pair. And uh, we'll head to the seventh, one nothing, San Francisco. Toyota Game Summary is brought to you by, of course, your local Toyota dealer. It's about uh, Shields and it's about uh, Johnny Cueto. Both have gone six innings. The uh, Cueto's got more strikeouts. Shields has got more walks, but he hasn't given up as many hits as Cueto. And uh, right now, the pitches, Shields has thrown 12 more. And Cueto will face. Norris. Norris is 0 for 2. Right under his hands, and it's 0 and 1. Two sink, a two seam fastball. Perfectly placed. Action in the Padres bullpen. He was just called up today. Yeah. Michael Kirkman. I have not seen him throw. Outside with a quick pitch fastball at 92. It's one ball and one strike. Hit on the ground foul and a broken bat for Norris and a nice play. By our ball dude, Mark Madden. Yeah. Wait to make a play with that little glove. Not a bit. You see that little glove and you look at it and you go, wow. Well, Joe Morgan's glove wasn't much bigger than that. Yeah, that's how big it was. And uh, it turned Joe into a gold glove second baseman. It's not like the glove did it all for him, but it, the smaller glove really helped him.
two and two. Well, when he was playing second base for the Big Red Machine in Cincinnati, and they would turn a double play, he and Dave Concepcion, the shortstop. That ball did not stay in his glove very long. It was musical. They were fantastic together. I think Concepcion should be in the Hall of Fame. Got him. Good changeup. Seven strikeouts. Completely turns around, shows him his numbers, and then goes and dots the outside corner at the knees with a perfect changeup. And look how out front Derek Norris is. It's just a, a guy who really gets what pitching's all about, upsetting the timing of hitting. Here's Ramirez who looks at a strike. I think Ramirez thought that that was a strike. I think that smile was intended to be fake. He has lips are smiling, but his eyes weren't. That was a Jeff Kent smile. Inside target, almost to the back foot, a ball and a strike. On deck is Jamile Weeks. Out of play, one and two. Steps out. And well, steps out again. So. Cueto had an idea of what he wanted to throw it, and Posey couldn't find it. He suggested four pitches, and finally he stepped off. They're going to regroup. Let's change up away. The guy that likes to work quick, like Cueto, gets it going. For the most part tonight, he hasn't shaken off a lot with Posey's suggestions. But when you can't hook up on a pitch, especially in a one-two count, you kind of feel bad as a catcher that you couldn't find the, the one pitch you wanted to go to. You want to keep that rhythm going. Sometimes just not being able to find the right pitch and then slow you down just a little bit, throw you off. This is going to be out of play. Not hit very high. That was a big league plant job right on the hands of Ramirez. Ramirez likes that ball middle of away, middle away. He, he doesn't like to get jammed. That ball ate him up. And a base hit. Well, Monday, May 9th is Korean Heritage Night. Your special event package will include a ticket to see the Giants take on the Blue Jays and a limited edition Korean Giants drawstring bag. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events and check it out. So that'll bring to the plate Jamile Weeks. And a toss to first, and Ramirez is back. Ramirez has one steal. He's try his best to get into scoring position. And a strike. Yeah. 
Weeks is struck out and he's flied out to center field. Throwing a lot of fastballs to Weeks tonight. Out of play, nothing in two. So he goes down at the knees with a little backdoor slider and he gets the 0 2 count. And the one pitch he likes to throw him is that high fastball across the letters. And that last breaking ball down around the knees sets it up. Got him. Two seam movement started on the inside corner, let the movement bring it back into the strike zone. And that, that's just a, a, an old pitcher carving up a young hitter. That's what that is. Some jackknives away from it. Two seam right across the belt. See you later. Eighth strikeout. Yeah. DJ Rayburn thought about it for just a little bit. And Rosales takes a strike. Greg Papa was the one that mentioned the numbers of quite a first pitch strikes. Pretty impressive. Well, you're right. I mean, he's had strike one 20 out of 26 hitters he's faced. It just makes life so much easier when you're on top of a hitter 0 1 to start it out with. But he is just painting that outside corner with that two seam movement. It really is a nice look at it from behind home plate. These guys are seeing it out of his hand. They're thinking it's going to be away. Runner goes and it's rolled foul. Oh and two. Hey, the family's out. They brought their gloves, blankets. And he pops Rob's glove out of it. Oh and two to Rosales. In the dirt. One and two. Played it with two strikeouts in the seventh. Eight total in the game, one walk. He walked Rosales in the fifth. Oh, a little interesting over there at first. That's an unusual way to get back to the base. But I guess any way you can. Look out. <laughs> Ideally you want to come back to that corner of the bag. I mean it's the farthest point of the base away from the glove. I mean, he did everything you're supposed to do. He got a little leg tied there. So the pitch is high and away. It's now two and two to Rosales. Reminding himself, keep that shoulder in as you start your drive towards your target. Nope, three and two. And the last couple of fastballs have had a, a little sling to it, and he knows what he's doing. And the beautiful thing about it, a veteran pitcher with good command, they usually know how to make the correction to get back into the strike zone and get back into command of the baseball. Well, you would think a walk here and you'd see Wallace. Runner goes, swing and a miss. He got him. Strikes out the side. He's got nine. One nothing Giants.
Kennedy Park. The Giants hanging on. It's a one nothing lead. Girls are having a good time, as you would expect. Oh yeah, they got the groove going. This one here. Got some munchies. A little curly top. Very good. Very good. Angel Pagan's going to lead things off. My little ones here tonight. Yeah, on a cool night. Mom and Dad's not afraid of a little chill in the air. Nothing like a pair of red cheeks. Yep. Those little ones get the rosy cheeks, don't they? Pagan is. 0 for 2. Really hit a ball sharply to Ramirez in the third. Then he popped out to Weeks, who made a nice running catch in the fifth. And a first pitch strike. Giants have hit a lot of balls hard tonight. They haven't got a lot yeah. to show for it. That is a fact. Connor Gillespie. Gregor Blanco, Brandon Bell watching. Hit on the ground, and this was right to Weeks at the cut of the grass. One out. We always talk about the defensive sets that we see coming around baseball now. The Padres, they employ a lot of them, and they've really worked for them tonight. I mean, they've really made the difference in the score. The Giants holding on to a 1 0 lead. It could have been a lot more on the board for the Giants had it not been for these defensive shifts that the Padres have put up. Span's got the only RBI of the game as he doubled over the head of Kemp in the fifth. Here is the 3 2 changeup that ended before the Padres in the top of the seventh. This is strikeout number nine. Circle changeup. Rosal is way out front. Span with a healthy rip and a foul. Out of play. 41,413 here tonight. Day baseball tomorrow, where we will see another terrific crowd. And then it's on to New York. Giants love their day baseball, Giants fans. So it'll be a quick turnaround. 1 1 to Span. Out of play again, 1 and 2. Joe Panic to follow. Outside, two and two. Tried to wrap that breaking ball in, in the outside corner. Did not miss by much, and that was pitch number 90 for James Shields. That's a good pitch. He shook off three other pitches to get to that backdoor slider, and he made the pitch he wanted. He just didn't get the call. That backdoor slider has always been a good pitch for James Shields. Well, he's got to come in now. He doesn't want to walk Span. And Span fights off a good pitch to stay alive. So panic again watching from the on deck circle. And the payoff. Up slowly two weeks. Two outs for panic. 
And Joe tonight is lined out, bounced out, and has drawn a walk. So Panic now will try to get on for Duffy. And he pops this one into center field. It'll be Ramirez going out, and he'll make the catch, and that'll end the inning. So we'll head to the eighth inning. Shields will not hit. It's one nothing. Jeff. Giants one, Padres nothing. Here in the eighth inning, it'll be Brett Wallace who's going to lead things off. He'll be hitting for Shields. Wallace had a pinch hit in the eighth inning of the game last night off of Derek Law. He's got lots of power and he swings for it. Giants with the overshift. And it's high and wide, one ball and no strikes. Nine hits of the game, six for the Padres, three for the Giants. Swing and a miss. That's what I'm talking about. One ball and one strike. Well, he's got plenty of pop. Born in Marin. Some Bay Area ties. Always seems to swing the bat well against the Giants. And that's just outside. Two balls and one strike. John Jay. And then Myers. And it's three and one. And there's the career damage 343 with one home run. It's three and two. The high school in Napa. I mean, he had a one for 19 going on the year till that base hit last yeah, night. He did. This, just for bookkeeping's sake, is pitch number 100 for Cueto. And Wallace swings at ball four. Yeah, but he was looking for a fastball and got one. He's trying to tie this game up. 
There you see what he's done in 100 pitches. Two to one strike ball ratio. So this important 3 2 pitch Posey and Cueto trying to come up with the right pitch. And it's a fair ball. And it kicks to Pence. And Pence keeps it to a single. Unbelievable. So once again, Brett Wallace. Getting it done against the Giants. Wow. A little slider. Just to get it in slider middle in. And Wallace rakes this past Bell who had no chance to get it. And it would be hard to get one past Bell, but he did. So here's John Jay. And this is foul at the plate, and it's 0 and 1. This is the fourth time the Padres have gotten their leadoff hitter on in this game. Good swing and a foul back. Nothing in two. I mean, he's on every fastball yeah. he's throwing. He is. And that's what he's thinking too. Pitching for that same ground ball, they got the double play with him batting back in the fifth inning. Got him. And he gets the strikeout. Second time he's got it tonight. That's 10 on the evening for Cueto. I may be wrong, but that was at 93, and that may be the first one he's thrown at 93 all night. I mean, that's the thing with him. We see him you know, pitch anywhere from 88 to 95. I mean, it, and that's in a Giants uniform. We've seen him go higher than, than that velocity wise when he was a member of the Reds. So it always great when you mention that because it points out what you say all the time. Guys will save it. And he does not overthrow. He throws at a speed he can control. He's not a max effort guy. Foul off the bat of Myers and it's 0 and 1. Really a little surprised, Mike, that uh, Jankowski isn't running at first. Well, they've got four men on the bench now. They eliminated one when they brought up an eight, uh, a 13th pitcher. But you're right, Jankowski is a real base stealing threat. Tremendous speed. My bad. I think they were listening to the broadcast. My bad. <laughs> so well, there he is. And Corey Jankowski, or I'm sorry, Travis Jankowski, I mean, he, he can fly. And I would look to see him go almost immediately. But again, Cueto not easy to steal off of for a couple reasons. Number one, great pickoff move. Number two, very quick to home. Myers had a solid single in the fourth. Active wins leaders. Johnny Cueto with 99 in career wins. That was close, and he's got to move quicker than that, too. Like everything else he does, he's got about five different moves to first. Now 
Oh, there. I see Giants are going to take a peek at it. Two balls, one strike. So it's three and one. Maybe you see Jankowski go right here. Trying to go inside. He makes the pitch as the Booba takes it a little bit out of the strike zone. Three and two. So three one. Myers not looking for a breaking ball. And Jankowski's going now. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. Throw down the second. Double play. Posey and Cueto do it again. And we will head to the bottom of the eighth. It's one nothing right over the top. Got him. 11 strikeouts for Cueto. Player of the game is brought to you by Honda. No doubt about it. Johnny Cueto is that man tonight. A brilliant performance through eight innings, 11 strikeouts. And he has come up big every time he's had to make a pitch. So we're going to make him our player of the game brought to you by Honda. Everything's working. Great location with five pitches. And a call strike to Duffy. Like he's going to come out of this ball game either. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and smog experts. Brandon Maurer, don't let the 7.00 ERA fool you. He's got good stuff. He's a setup guy. Mid to high 90s fastballs, curveball, slider change up. And he'll throw that curveball anytime. It's a good strikeout push to both righties and lefties. Duffy down the right field line, foul. And this strikeout number 10, and here's how he entered it strike him out, throw him out, and everybody. On their feet to celebrate another zero on the board. 
in inning number eight from Johnny Cueto. And Duffy chases a breaking ball, so he's gone. And that'll bring up Buster Posey. Buster tonight is 0 for 3. And a first pitch fastball at 95 for a call strike. Belt on deck. Miami still leading the Dodgers 5 3. That game is in the bottom of the eighth as Posey chops this one. Weeks is coming in and he throws him out on a nice play. It was a nice play. I had a feeling Buster was going to beat that one out, but he doesn't. Well, he's pumping down that lane. Thinking he had a chance. Going right down to the shoe tops and off his right foot. A little flip over to first base. So Jamiah Weeks makes a nice play. Makes a tough play look easy, as a matter of fact. And it wasn't. Here's Belt with two outs. By the way, bullpen's empty. Johnny Cueto's coming back out. Well, stay tuned immediately after Giants baseball for Eastern's Giants post game live. You get highlights, reaction, analysis. It's all coming up right after the game. Three and oh. Well, I saw the green light Hunter Pence on a three oh. They might do the same right here with Belt. Belt looking at it. Three and one. This coach would love to get another runner, too, just for insurance going into this ninth inning. Belt drives it into the gap. And it's going to be over the head of Upton. And Belt into second base with a double. That'll make Bam Bam Mula's Giants hitting instructor extremely happy. And he drove that ball through the opposite field gap. No fillet here. Takes a two seam fastball. Head down right through the swing. And even Upton, who's played a great left field tonight, could not catch up with this one. Pence is one for two. See it getting loose, or at least trotting down the bull, bullpen to get loose. Fastball just a wee bit low. Cueto tonight has issued one walk. That was to Adam Rosales in the fifth. He's got 11 strikeouts. Breaking ball and Pence waited on it nicely. 
And he dribbles it foul. You know, and of those 11 strikeouts that Cueto's had, he's, only, he's had nine swing and miss strike threes. Yeah. It's not like he's had a, a real generous strike zone tonight. He has just been masterful with location and mixture of speeds. And that'll end the inning. So we'll head to the ninth. Kemp, Upton, and Norris. It's one nothing Giants. DSN Bay Area is brought to you by Ring Central. Business communications made simple. Giants won Padres nothing here in the ninth. And Kemp is going to hit first. Bruce Brozzi letting his veteran right hander stretch it out. Yeah, he's had 12 career complete games, six of which have been shutouts. But he's going to have to face a guy who's had really good numbers against the lifetime. To start it out here in the ninth. And he starts him off with a breaking ball, and Kemp fouls it out of play. Kemp has struck out twice, and he's bounced out to Duffy. I feel pretty much straight away. Two balls and one strike. Two and two. A changeup's just been lethal. And Jeff Matt Kemp just cannot get a purchase on it. I mean, he is a hundred percent convinced when that arm action snaps that he's going to get a fastball, and he's drooling, and then he just cannot hold back. Oh man, good pitch. And Quito wanted it. I don't believe they're going to let him get it back in his stretch tonight. So this becomes a big pitch. Was Brochy barking at DJ Rayburn, played umpire. Change up. Nice fastball away. Flipped out into right field. Pence coming in. And Pence <laughs> makes the sliding catch. One down in the ninth. Either return the place or replace the turf. 
And I don't think Pitts had a great read on it initially. He had to make up for it. And he goes down and takes a big chunk of sod. As long as you don't stick, as long as you slide, you're in good shape. So here's Upton. And Upton hits one out to Pence. Two down in the ninth. And a one pitch out. Just what Dave Rigetti ordered. Norris is 0 for 3, but he's got power. <laughs> Duffy. Belt. And that's the ball game. Johnny Cueto and Buster Posey with a Buster hug on top of the mound, and the Giants, they beat the San Diego Padres. On a really fun game to watch Johnny Cueto and Posey work together. Uh, he's so flamboyant in his style, but tonight he was an absolute clinic with a mixture of speeds. The changeup was as good as he could possibly throw it, but it was more than that. It was how he worked the corners with all of his pitches. He elevated his fastball when he needed to. He and Buster Posey together tonight were absolutely brilliant. So the Giants now have won the first two games in this series. They will try to get the sweep tomorrow with Jeff Samarja before they head on to New York City. And uh, and a win tomorrow, Mike, and and all of a sudden it's not that you forget about the first four games on this homestand, but uh, you play well and you make up for it. Well, you're right. You have a chance to have a, a five and five series at home and they'll take it. Another skipper out there to shake the hand of Johnny Cueto, and I'm sure that Cueto enjoyed the fact that the Heat, Bruce Bochy, let him go back out there in the night to try to get that complete game. Yeah. All right, we've got Amy G with a guest and a guest. That's right. We have Ernie Garros here from our Spanish broadcast translating for Johnny Cueto. And Johnny, I'm just going to give you a couple of numbers. 11 strike. Well, he's got to stay warm though too. So Irwin, 11 strikeouts, his seventh. Career shutout to record your 100th career win. Your reaction. Tu reacción. 100 victorias, 11 ponches y 7 blanqueadas. Bueno, digo yo primeramente lo doy gracias a Dios en este momento. Me sentí bastante bien con Porsi y trabajamos y estaba no tuve de trabajando. Well, I just want to thank the Lord first, and I just want to say that I felt really good, and I think that Buster and I worked really good together tonight. The strike him out, throw him out in the eighth inning with Buster probably bought you a chance to get back out there in the ninth. When you came out after the eighth, do you look at Bruce Bochy or do you not look at your manager and just hope he doesn't talk to you? El ponche y el out en segunda parece que fue lo que te dio la oportunidad de, de regresar al juego, pero cuando estuviste en la banca, volteaste a ver al manager para ver si te iba a dejar salir o simplemente asumiste que ibas a volver a salir. No, 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 yo fui normal que iba a ir de nuevo para atrás porque él no me dijo nada y yo estaba negativo que iba a pichar para el otro día. Well, he didn't say anything, and I didn't even think anything about it. I just uh, sat on the bench. I didn't even look at him. And I was just 100% sure that I was going to come out. Johnny, you were able to come through in situations where you needed a big pitch and get out of jams. It seemed like you were your, at your calmest in the highest pressure situation. Do you thrive on that? Había situaciones de, de peligro, necesitaste hacer buenos lanzamientos. Parece que son situaciones en las que tú te creces. ¿Es, ¿Te sientes de esa manera? Bueno, yo quería, lo que yo quería era buscar un doble play y así era que lo quería tirar para que salga un, un gran bote doble play. Well, I mean, on those situations, I, I tried to get a double play and I think everything worked out fine and, and that's how, how everything just turned out. Gracias por la entrevista. Dwayne and Mike. 
All right, nice job by Irwin and by Johnny Cueto and of course Amy G. And uh, one of the things that you look at when you look at Johnny Cueto, you think, well, is he a strikeout guy? And I, I guess he can be, but uh, he had some swing throughs tonight, didn't he? Well, he did. I mean, he had 16 swing and misses, which is a lot. Uh, and for you know, I mean, he's a situational pitcher. He'll pitch for the strikeout when the situation says pitch for the strikeout. But he had it going tonight, and this changeup was absolutely uh, off the charts. But you know another thing too: 32 fit hitters he faced, 25 first pitch strikes. He was in their face all night long. But with everything, he mixed it up with the curveball, the slider, the changeup, moved two types of fastballs around, and then, you know he quick pitch. He would come back and he have the big spin around. I mean, he's fun to watch. And if you're going to throw a shutout, you want to throw a one nothing shutout. I mean, there's nothing more macho than a one nothing shutout. So his first complete game as a giant, it's a shutout in front of the whole yep. crowd, and they love him. And one thing we should point out, it was a replay tonight that helped the Giants get this win. Final score, one nothing, San Francisco. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. East Insurance Giants postgame live with interviews in the wrap. That's going to start right now.